Hi guys, you're very welcome to a podcast on Narcon coming to you again from Manhattan in New York where it's absolutely roasting and I've just switched the aircon off so I hope I last the video just to make it a bit quieter. Okay, today I'd like to get into how to successfully leave a narcissist and in a winning position and 10 things to put in place to give yourself the best chance possible of having a successful outcome or at least damage limitation. Now, I know you would say, well, the best way to leave a narcissist is just to go. Not everybody is in a position to do that. Some people are married, some people have business commitments and children, etc. that makes it pertinent to put things in place for the future necessary association with that particular narcissist. Obviously, if you can leave and go no contact and block, 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 not talk about the narcissist, that's the best way to leave them. For the circumstances you may find yourself in, you may be coming to the realization that you are with a narcissist. You may have had your light bulb moment. Somebody may have mentioned to you that perhaps you're with a covert narcissist. And after years of living in this state of confusion with a lot of unhappiness and a lot of psychological and emotional abuse going down, you are now at the point where you have a very good idea that you're dealing with a person who has a personality disorder in as much as you can ascertain from the information that you're now getting. So you've made the decision that you want to leave this person and that in effect is 50% of the work. So try and keep that decision steady because narcissists have this nearly built in sonar, radar for the minutest change in their target or victim. Because remember, you are essential to the narcissist if you're a partner of the narcissist in an intimate relationship in particular. You are their food source. You are their oxygen. They will notice a change. So it's very important to keep this all very quiet in the background and in as much as possible, maintain your normal behavior. They're on alert, they will try and hoover people back in, they will try and improve their behavior. They will promise you heaven and earth to keep you until they're ready to discard you once they know that you have cottoned on to what's going on. So without further ado, let's get into the 10 points that I have down that I think personally are pertinent and important for you to successfully leave a narcissist. One, Understand that narcissists, when they get with you, actually in the background have a long-term strategy in place. With some it's conscious and with some it's unconscious, but it's a modus operandi that they use, particularly in the intimate relationship. So while they're love bombing you and devaluing you and living life with you, the more you fall in love with them and the more you fall under control, under their control, the more they actually disrespect you. Because essentially in their true self nature, they disrespect themselves. The narcissism is a front of omnipotence, of them glorifying themselves and thinking that they're the best thing since fried bread. Basically, they know who they are and the fact that you can't see the truth, that you believe in the mask, essentially gets them to disrespect you more and more and more the more you fall under. They actually believe that you're a naive fool and that the way you live your life and the way you spiritually live your life is ridiculous. They can't see you as being superior to them so they have to put you down and they have to disrespect you. Now, this is going on in the background. So while you think you're the most important person to them in the love bomb stage, they're actually telling their friends different stuff. 
subtly and slowly, well, I'm with her or with him, but they do have a lot of problems. However, I'm with them, you know, I love them, etc. This is all chipping away in the background. And the more the relationship goes on and goes down, the more things they have set up for your dreadful ending. And that's the only way I can put it. They're also triggering you, particularly in the devaluation stage, so that you may display reactive abuse towards them so that you're not living in your best self. They're manipulating you in every way possible. You're essentially going down to their level of low life living style, which you wouldn't normally do and you hadn't before. But this development in your lesser self and you becoming less empathic because you're dealing with abuse on a psychological, physical, maybe a spiritual level, you're becoming less. So you may have acted out of character and very badly as a reaction. And that's why it's called reactive abuse to them and towards them, all of which they're going to use against you at the end. So understand that this is going on in the background, that you're being set up in the background. Understand that so you won't be so triggered by it if it explodes onto into your reality at some stage towards the end. Two, when you realize that this is happening, that they never respected you and accept that, and it is hard to accept, but it's essential for your survival that you now become a different version of yourself in order to fight this war. You do not have to remain like this. You're fighting for yourself to survive so that you can be yourself in a later life when this is over. When you realize, stop playing into their narrative. Understand that reacting abusively or using reactive abuse that they trigger in you is actually setting up a case for them, which they are documenting, which they will use against you as you leave them. They will put you into the position of the aggressor and the crazy one in the relationship. And this will be, there's a PR job going on in the background and the smear campaign will come when you leave. They may even involve law enforcement. They will do, they'll use it in court so that you're not a fit parent for the children. This is all going on in the background. So stop now if you have been triggered in the past by not understanding what, they're, what you're up against. Do not be triggered. Be very, very careful at this point in time not to be further triggered. Because remember, they will notice the minutest change in you. And at this point, they may use extra triggering to get you into trouble, basically, to get you into trouble, to record you or to document how you react to this mind blowing psychological and emotional torture. Don't let them know, you know, this plays into the first few points. Do your best to maintain your routine and the same, be as similar to your normal self as possible. Them on alert is a dangerous position to be in and they can fast forward if they feel that you're going to leave them. They can fast forward something as heinous as it, it damaging themselves and saying you did it or damaging property and saying you did it, setting you up basically either getting you to do it or pretending that you did it. And with the background that they've been gathering on you to date, they'll put that all together and there'll be an explosive getting you out or using it against you. I know you get the picture. Four, get educated up. Get as educated as you can about what you're dealing with. Narcissism in general, try and get a, try and get a good solid background that reinforces what you know already because cognitive dissonance and trauma bond are difficult, difficult things to overcome, particularly if the narcissist cops on to the fact that you're leaving them and gives you a big love bomb and says, let's work on this or let's go to therapy. So try and maintain your education so that you can stay stoic and remain remain with the criteria and agenda that you've 
decided on in leaving the narcissist. Five, identi identify your ducks, basically, your priorities in how to extract yourself with the minimum amount of damage and in the best position to win going forward. Because the narcissist, particularly if you share children with them or in business with them, they play nasty. They play nasty and they have, will always try and trigger and taunt you to the best of their ability. Don't make it easy for them, basically, is what I'm saying. There are things you can do to lessen the impact of a narcissist troublemaker who does not want to let their target of choice go. And if they see you having the audacity to escape them and to put implement things in place that make it harder for them to control and annoy you, they don't like that. They don't like that at all. So a priority list can be legal, can be support, can be information gathering. Basically, it's it can be financial. You may need to move money around. You may need to set up a bank account, a secret bank account of your own. All these things won't come naturally to you, but all these things are totally necessary. In dealing with a person of this nature, you need to extract yourself. It's a cold war. It's a cold war and you need to fight, not going down to their level, but you need to fight in the background the way they've been fighting you in the background. You need to put your defenses in place. Number six. Sorry guys, this is Manhattan. <laughs> this is Manhattan. Number six, get support and carefully choose the support that you get. What I mean by that is talk to very few people about what you're going through so that there's a minimum amount of chance of this information getting back to the narcissist. If you are picking a therapist or someone to get support from and to guide you through the process, make sure they know what they're talking about. Make sure they understand the, narciss no, sorry, the narcissistic personality disorder because if they don't fully understand it, they're going to guide you in a more empathic way, which is not appropriate in this circumstance. This is actually a war that you need to fight before you can bring your empathy into place or into part of your life again. This person needs to be dealt with in a very cool, cold and logical manner. I don't mean to be cruel. I don't mean to cause them damage. I mean, in order to win the war and save yourself, save your children, save your business, save your home, they need to be dealt with as a dangerous creature. Number seven, spend time away from the narcissist if you have the opportunity without alerting them that anything's wrong. In other words, say you need to take um, a vacation, you feel that you're exhausted, you need to go to, I don't know, whatever, go to family for a rest, you need to take care of a member of your family, you need to do business abroad, whatever gaps, you need to go on a course, whatever gaps you can take away from the narcissist and their brainwashing techniques to get your mind focused on the task ahead, the more beneficial it will be to you. The more time away from them, not in their presence, the more beneficial it'll be to get your head straight. Make an exit strategy. So that goes back to making a priority list of the things you need to put in place. And usually this is to go to a lawyer to get legal advice for the location, your location in the world and whatever legalities that particular state, country or continent follow, you need to implement your escape plan in accordance with the legalities of the area. So usually legal advice is the most pertinent. Your finances and your financial advice and how to extract yourself from this partnership, be it business, marriage or a com combination of having children together, 
that needs to be going on in the background so that when you leave, they don't wipe out accounts, etc. So making your exit strategy and having some kind of a time plan in place as to when and where and how is important. And it's also really beneficial to you to ease your mind and to relax your mind because this is overwhelming, is to have things in place so that you have lists. Don't leave these lists anywhere. Obviously that goes without saying in a secure place where the narcissist has no ac ex sorry, access to them. If you feel you're making progress and you're not thinking from one thing to the other, what do I have to do next? But you're working through logical steps to extricate yourself from this situation, it will relax your brain. And your poor brain has had so much to deal with. It's finally getting the chance to file things, to work in an orderly manner. And remember, narcissists thrive in chaos, and that's the situation they want you to be in, because in chaos, the ground is moving under you, and you're not capable of making the best decisions in a situation where reality is movable and continually, continually moving. So this is your chance to put structure on a very chaotic situation. Number nine, this will go against the grain of you as an empath or as a person who cares about other people, but this again is necessary. You have to, you cannot go into battle with an individual of this nature and offer up a candle when they have a sword in their hand. It doesn't mean you go down to their level, on that level they win, but it does mean that you need to buckle up, to weapon up and to identify the narcissist's greatest motivator. What motivates them most? Is it money? Is it property? Is it your, the status they share with you? also recognize their weaknesses. What are their weaknesses? So it's just a battle strategy, to be honest with you. It's the same battle strategy you, you would use in a physical war with one army against another. Particularly with narcissists, however, the motivational strategy is the one that usually works the best. If, for instance, they're motivated by money, and if, for instance, you're lucky enough to have enough money to defend yourself with. If you can use that in the negotiation and make it a pertinent part of the negotiation in that their behavior can lose them money or gain them money. So it's a constant. So particularly say if you have children with them, that you make an agreement with provisions that work for you so that they get this money or they get this place to stay or they get this share in the business with conditions. And if they veer off those conditions, the contract is null and void. So basically you have to put controls in with narcissists and they will always push against the controls. As you know, they push against boundaries continually. But if you pinpoint the motivator for a narcissist, what's most important to them, and you offer that to them with conditions, you have the best chance of the least troublesome time ahead. And number 10, leave safely. When you do actually go to physically leave, Make sure that somebody else is aware of it, like your lawyer or someone in a place of authority, even if you have been down to the police station or the law enforcement officers and you have filed a report. You could even file a report that you're, you know, being psychologically abused, that you are going to leave this person, but that you're afraid of a fallout when you leave. So you're going to do so quietly. Whatever you need to put in place, it is a good idea to tell somebody in authority that you're planning this exit 
and that you're worried that it could be contentious and do it at a time obviously when the narcissist isn't there when you feel that there's a better element of safety or bring somebody trusted with you which would even be more preferable to help you leave and to witness any maybe the narcissist coming back or whatever any try and preempt any situation that the narcissist could then accuse you of doing something wrong guys that's the kind of basic outline of how to leave a narcissist successfully everybody's situation is different and they're just generalizations that you can put into place i guess for the most part the main the main advice to give would be to make a list of your priorities and to work through your priorities as they pertain to your own particular situation. The very best of luck if anybody wants specialised advice or customised advice in relation to their own situation, please contact me at narxcon at gmail.com. Please share the video to help anybody else to, to reach a wider audience and always, as always, please subscribe and like um, if you if you found the advice to be of any help. Bye for now and I'll see you again shortly. Take very great care in the meantime. Bye for now.